Hey guys, welcome back to my channel for another episode of Born Star Confessions. Today I've got the one and only Fitness Poppy, so welcome. Thank you for having me. Um, having fun. So, how did you get that name? Because that's... <laughs> start there. Yeah, um, well, it all started before I ever even began doing this. Um, I just had my Instagram page. And I couldn't figure out a good Instagram handle. So I was going through multiple handles. And then one day it was when I lived in Sacramento and I was go-go dancing. So I was driving to a gig in the Bay area in San Francisco. And I was just thinking, okay, what are some things that I'm like passionate about that I could like fit into the name and everyone calls me poppy. So I'm like, okay, maybe something poppy. And so I'm like running through different things. And then I'm like, I just thought fitness poppy. I'm like, that kind of rolls off the tongue that that kind of has a ring to it. So I went with that. And then when I started doing the content, the porn, um, I was like, I don't really need a stage name. I already have fitness poppy. And that's, that's just in that. <laughs> no, I like it. I'm, I'm surprised it was available. I would expect every possible variation of that to be taken. But no. Yeah. When I first thought of it, that was the first thing I checked. Like, let me make sure this isn't already taken. And yeah, that's just, it's been mine. The, the good thing is I started my website. I bought that domain fitnesspoppy.com. So like, that's, that's my name. That's, no one can take that from me. Damn. Okay. I'm impressed. So how old are you? 28. Oh God. <laughs> Your baby. Uh, shit. <laughs> Damn. Enjoy it while it lasts. Dear God. I know. I know. There's days even now that I feel old, so. <laughs> oh, God. It only gets worse. <laughs> I know. The perspective in mind thing is way better, though. Yeah. No, for sure. The older you get, the more you figure out what actually matters and all that. Yeah. So where does, like, your story begin? Like, you started on Instagram, if I remember correctly, right? Yeah. Um, what built up my following from the get go was when I started go go dancing. Um, because at first it was just in Sacramento. And the next thing you know, I have promoters messaging me from all of the Castro, Oakland, San Jose, all over. And so now I'm on their pages and my Instagram was growing from that. And then I start working with brands and JJ Malibu and I'm on their pages. So that already got my Instagram to a point where I had a decent following with a fan base that was really engaged. So when I made that transition to making content, that's what kind of helped boost me um, already from the get go was having that. But how did you go from like go, go dancing and, you know, more traditional stuff? What, what was the straw that broke camel's back where you're like, okay, I'm going to make content? Yeah. Um, it, if you honestly take me back five years ago and said, hey, five years from now, this is going to be you. <laughs> this is what you're going to be doing. I'd be like, you're crazy. Because, yes, I was go-go dancing. But the idea of me doing porn on the internet, that was so far-fetched for me. Um, I couldn't fathom that. And... At the time, I was working through various management jobs. I managed some 24-hour fitness locations, um, some other gyms as well, the vitamin shop, and then GNC. And this was right before the peak of COVID. So I'm working at GNC. I'm a store manager. I was actually a senior store manager, so I was overseeing multiple stores. And I was about to get a district manager promotion in April. And then, of course, I, all hell broke loose in March. And we were deemed essential. So I'm like, okay, cool. This is just, you know, slowing down the progression, but I'm still going to get that promotion. Fast forward, the company files for bankruptcy and I get laid off. And I'm living in San Francisco, which is extremely expensive, but I wasn't tied into a lease. I had just had a breakup and I was dealing with, you know, now not having a job in a place that's not hiring and everything shut down. So I had some friends out in Miami. I went to go see them visit and I was like, I love this. This place is magical and everything's wide open <laughs> because it was a red state. So I would decide, okay, I'm going to move to Miami. And while I'm still here in California, I'll make a trip down to LA and fuck it. You know, I, I've got nothing to lose at this point. Let's go ahead and uh, start the OnlyFans just as like a backup to build up some money until I can find something stable in Miami. Uh, 
but then it just kind of skyrocketed and then I get out to Miami and it just skyrockets even more. And I'm like, well, this, this is my full-time job now. <laughs> so I'm guessing that prior to that, like you had gotten tons of DMS on Instagram asking oh, yeah. you to do it and all that stuff. Right. Yeah. That's what helped me to like make that decision where I know, okay, like I didn't expect to be nearly as successful as I have become, but I knew that there was a want for that because people are always asking me, you know, what's the only fans, what's the only fans when I was dancing, you know, people would ask that. So I'm like, okay, there's at least a need for that where it'll be some money. And, and the whole goal was literally just something to tie me over until I got a, a stable job. And then I realized out of all the management jobs that I did, even with the pay that I was going to make as the district manager, nothing matched up to what I was making. So I'm like, let's just ride this out <laughs> and see how far it goes. Wow. That's, what do you attribute, like, I, I get your Instagram success and all that, but what do you really attribute your success in porn to? Oof, I ask myself. Because, I mean, I can count on one hand the number of guys that are at your level as far as followers. Yeah. Um, you know, in the beginning, I was confused because I am not like a common physique that you see, like, yes, there are tons of muscle guys. Yes, there are tons of thick guys, but I'm constantly like this yo-yo, especially when I first started where I'm like, I'd have the muscle, but I'd have a belly. Um, I've got the tattoos. So I thought maybe it's because I'm relatable. Like I'm not shredded. I'm not like this perfect, like Adonis that people like look up to. Um, and then I also thought maybe it's also relatable that unlike the majority of the porn stars out there, I've got a very average sized dick. And so maybe people feel empowered by that. I don't know what it is. I, it, it could be a combination of things. The one thing that I know is when I was in college, I was studying for business and marketing. And so from the get go, I'm like, okay, I know how to market. Let me just market the hell out of myself, which is what I did. Um, but even then, like you can market the hell out of yourself, but you have to have something to back it. And uh, I just went crazy with the content I was doing. God, at one point I was filming almost every day. I was putting out three full scenes a week, um, every time with a different content creator. I was working on getting the best angles and and just doing the most, you know, because it's it's performative what we do, right? So if it's just regular sex, I'm basically sticking to three positions, maybe four. But for this, I'm like, okay, let me lift people up. Let me do all these crazy positions that I would never do in real life, but that that is something that people see and they're like, wow, oh my gosh, I want this. And uh, that, and then also just keeping engaged with the fans. So when I get comments, I try to like all of them. I try to respond to the comments that I feel are worthy of getting a response um, just so that, you know, they feel heard and they're not just commenting, you know, out into the open, like I'm seeing it, I'm responding. And sometimes like the DMs that I get that are like really heartfelt, I respond to those too. So I think that helped um, with not only gaining, but maintaining a fan base. But yeah, I would have never imagined to rise to the numbers that I have. <laughs> no, I think one thing you said, though, about being relatable, that a lot of people seriously underestimate. You know, like, for me personally, I think back to, like, Ron Jeremy. Oh, wow. that's He's, wow. like, the most successful porn star of all time. And you look at him, and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, the hell? And I think that was what made him so popular is so many people could relate to him. Yeah, no, that makes sense. It honestly does. Yeah. I mean, he also had a massive dick, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's <is> true. <laughs> but like you talk about your physique, like you had a bit of a belly, but like, is your physique still evolving or have you kind of settled on where you're at right oh, now? Yeah, it's definitely from where I started. To where I am now, a lot has changed with my physique. Um, at the time, when I first started, I was 260. Right now, I'm 270, but that weight is dramatically different in how I carry it. 260 was some muscle. I have always had this arm vein, so like that was always there, but veins elsewhere, you couldn't see. There was no separation in my quads and my legs. You couldn't see like any striations anywhere. So I was definitely like a, a 
a thick full whatever you want to call it in bodybuilding terms yeah yeah in bodybuilding terms um nowhere near stage ready um (laughs) but uh as time went on like i started really focusing on my physique more and i actually started working with a bodybuilding coach in miami to compete um and then some things in in life got in the way but then i started working with a coach again and um, just trying to be the best version of myself physically that I can and just pushing myself as hard as I can. Also in other realms too, um, I would have never imagined that me at my size, I'd be running, but I've been going for runs uh, the last few months. And this last weekend I ran a 646 mile. So yeah. Anyways, uh, you were on the men's running team. You were 180. 270 now. Yeah, I was on the men's row team, um, but we did a lot of running. That was one oh, of the right. cardio uh, exercises that we did just for the stamina. And uh, yeah, I ran a 535 mile, but that was obviously 90 pounds ago. So I'm like, okay, I'm curious to see now what my mile time would be. So yeah. <laughs> wow. So is competing still... Yeah. It would be something that I would like to do um, eventually. It's just when you get into that mindset, like when I was working with my coach, it's very tunnel vision. Um, You as someone who lifts and takes care of your body, you know that the food is the biggest aspect when it comes to that. (laughs) And, you know, if I've got my meals that I have to eat, any social event revolves around food and if i'm gone for the house from the house for more than three hours i just missed a meal so that either means i need to bring my meals mm-hmm. with me or i need to limit the time that i'm outside of the house or i just completely avoid everything and i'm a recluse so <laughs> for me to to go into that it needs to be a time frame when i've reached a point where i'm like okay i, I don't really have anything lined up like i've got some travels lined up um, i don't want to be dealing with any with that it's it's possible to do but part of the funnest part of traveling is eating food and, and, and enjoying life. So yeah, it's something that I do want to definitely do later on down the line, but probably not within the next year. Yeah. Now that's one thing. The biggest I ever got to was like 268 oh. and I'm six feet. But like my quality of life was yeah. just <laughs> straight off. Like you said, and because like a lot of people think like, oh, bodybuilding is easy. Like, you mean you have to eat a ton? Like, no. I'm talking you are uncomfortably Thanksgiving day full. And the last thing in the world you want to do is eat. And you're just like. Yeah, you're force feeding yourself. Uh, When I was working with my coach, the heaviest that we got to was a 280. But it was a clean 280. And just maintaining that size and knowing that our point was to continue to grow because he wanted me to get to a clean 300 so that we could shred down for a possible like 275 270 stage weight because at that weight at my height that's you pretty much got it in the bag as long as you nail your posing and your stage performance uh but at 280 just knowing how uncomfortable i was most days force feeding constantly feeling bloated i'm like can I do this for another more like 20 more pounds? <laughs> it's, it's really tough. <laughs> yeah. It's miserable. Like I always thought to myself, if I could work out twice as long and eat half as much, I'd be Absolutely. ecstatic. The, the gym, that's my therapy. That's the fun part. It's the food that's just like, oh my gosh, that's the reason why so many people don't succeed because the food is the hardest part, staying on track and eating the right food. And then if you're trying to grow, getting in the amount of food that you need, and again, the right food, because like you can only eat so much chicken and rice. And (laughs) there was times I'd have a mouthful of food and I'm like, I don't even want to chew. So I just wash it down with water. Like that's not fun. (laughs) The most hardcore thing I've ever heard. I don't know if you know Brett Wilkin. uh, he's an IPB he- pro. Uh, he's uh, he's going to be competing in the Olympia okay. this year. But he works out in my gym, and he would yeah. blend uh, chicken breast and orange juice Ooh. in a blender. And I'm just like, oh, my yeah. God. Oh, that sounds I've nasty. heard of a few other bodybuilders. There was a woman bodybuilder who did that. She would take her chicken um her cabbage her rice and then she'd pour water in the blender and blend that 
and that way she could get it down quickly. And she said it just tasted like a slightly off chicken soup. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> that's not the quality of life I want. <laughs> no, it's miserable. Like at, at a certain point, you just, I don't know. I, I, I feel like, yeah, is it nice being bigger? Absolutely. But just, you know, like you said, you can't really yeah. leave the house. You're uncomfortably full. You just, yeah. And especially with you, like shooting content, like that would get in the way of it and just, yeah. It's, yeah. So where, where do you want to take all this? Cause I mean, damn, you're 28, dude. You got the entire <laughs> world in front yeah, of you. So uh, it's been three years now of making content and uh, it's funny when I started, I never knew that it would get to this point, but then once I realized, okay, this is where we're going. I was like, yeah, I could probably do this for two years. And now here we are on year three. Um, I would like to say um, that in the next five years, I won't be doing this um, just because it's taxing on your mind, on your body. And I do personal training as well. And I'm doing really well with that. And that's bringing in enough money where I don't necessarily need to be doing this, but this is bringing in so much more money. So it's, it's kind of hard to walk away from that, you know? Um, I, I could care less about the following on Twitter or Instagram. Um, but yeah, the money, like that's, yeah, you gotta make a living. Right. And I, I, I want nice things. I want a nice house. I want, um, I want, 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 and how do I get there? Uh, well, currently that's the best option that I have. So I've got the website. Um, the good thing is, is on the website, not only do I put my collabs every Friday, um, but I also have bonus content on Wednesdays and then vlogs every Monday. And the vlogs just show behind the content, like what I'm doing on my regular life. And I actually have a lot of fans that are following that as well as the content. So if I can get people hooked on the vlogs later on down the line, I could just transition to doing that and the personal training slash online coaching. Um, but for the near future, yeah, this is, we're just writing this out. <laughs> It, yeah, like one thing, and you kind of hinted at it, but I don't think a lot of people understand. Like, if you ever heard the term uh, golden shackles? So, golden shackles, my ex who got me into this um, is dealing with that currently. But what it, it typically refers to, like, people who get into porn or whatever, so they get in, they start making all this money, and the bills expand to fit the available okay. income, and then they find themselves in a position where, like, they're getting burned out or they want to quit, but they have so many revolving I bills every that. month that yeah. they can't, and they're trapped. You know, they got a seven-year, you know, car note and this and that, and they're just like, fuck. No, that's that kind of sums it up, I guess, because... I can't fathom anything else uh, that I could do where I would make this income um, unless I was like a super highly acclaimed lawyer <laughs> or a, a stock trader or something. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it is really hard to walk away from that. Um, so we'll see, we'll see where, where, you know, things go. I do want to start investing in properties. My goal is to buy a condo out in Miami and then live there for a few months out of the year, but Airbnb it for the rest of the time. Um, so that'll be bringing in money. It'll be paying off that. And then in time, just investing in other properties. I currently have a rental up in Washington um, that I'm renting out. So, and I bought that last year. So we'll see, you know, um, but yeah, it's, I think that sums it up purpose or perfectly is, is golden shackles. <laughs> Yeah, it just it's it's hard to it's, walk away yeah. from, and especially with bodybuilding too. There's a lot of they call it a broke man sport because it, it costs a lot, and um, in order to maintain and keep up with that, you either need to be doing really well and have a lot of sponsorships, or you need to be making good money. So this definitely helps with that. Oh yeah, absolutely. So one thing I did want to ask you about, and I mentioned it before. Your background. Oh, the shoes? It's a very <laughs> unique background. Like, what's the story there? How did this whole thing yeah, begin? Yeah, so 
growing up, uh, I grew up in a very low income household. And um, I remember I'd always see people with Jordans and I always loved them. Um, but we could never afford that. You know, we go to Ross for like shoes or, or the Goodwill. Um, and so I remember the very first time I got my first pair, I was like, hell yeah, I wore the shit out of those, ruined them. <laughs> but um, it was once I started, you know, getting into management, you know, I start treating myself here and there and buying like a pair of shoes every so often. Uh, but then once I started doing this, then it's like, okay, I'm going to give myself a pair of shoes every month to celebrate, you know, another month of success. And yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. On Instagram, you yeah. coordinate the outfits, all that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like to wear things that like all specifically, like when I'm going to pick out what I'm going to wear for the day, I'll grab my pair of shoes and I'll hold it up to like my outfits to like, make sure that it's the right shade. Uh, Cause it really drives me crazy when I see an outfit where someone's trying to match a color that doesn't, it's not the same shade. Uh, <laughs> so they're like two different reds, but they're off. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's a bright red and then like a brick red. I'm like, Oh no, no that clashes. <laughs> but yeah, so, I, I wear them all. <laughs> But how do you keep them all, like, in that condition? Because my shoes, I mean, they, they look pretty fucking beat up. Yeah, every week I wash the ones that need to be washed, whatever I wore that got dirty. Um, any little scuffs, any little dirt, I wash the outsides of them and then the bottoms of the shoes, too. Um, and then afterwards I let them dry and then put them back in display. <laughs> okay, so how do you go about washing a shoe? There's um, some sneaker cleaner that you can get um, literally on like Amazon called Jason Mark. And it comes with a little sneaker brush. So you basically you get the brush wet, you put a few drops on there, you clean it off. And then when it foams up, you wipe that off and you just keep going till it's clean. Make sure you brush nice and soft though, so that you don't scratch up your shoe. And yeah, that's basically it. It works really well for Jordans because they're made from leather. If you've got a shoe that's like suede or some kind of other material, not as easy. Um, but Jordans are leather, so it's fairly easy to clean them if you keep up with it. If you let them get super dirty and then you try to clean a really old pair, it'll clean it up, but it'll still look old. So it's just maintaining the shoe. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So aside from the fact that you're still a baby, so you don't need as much sleep, how in God's name do you have time for all this shit? Because, yeah. I mean, bodybuilding is a full-time job. It is. You're cleaning your shoes. You got to rental your managing. You're doing personal tr Like, what the fuck, dude? Yeah, sometimes I ask myself the same thing. Um, I'm very lucky that I have my boyfriend, Porphy. He also makes content um, because there's times when I'm, like, super stressed. And he, like, brings me down. He's like, hey, like, everything's cool. We're good. Uh, there's nothing to stress out about, like look at how well you're doing and succeeding, whatever. And then we'll specifically take time off for like ourselves. So like last week I didn't film at all. Um, I just focused on training my clients, going to the gym, focusing on me and then focusing on us. Uh, we went and saw the new Insidious movie. Um, I've got a dog, so we're t playing with her, taking her to the dog park. So I do make sure to make time for myself, but sometimes I have to remind myself that like, you can't just continue to run on and on and on and, and do these things. Cause yeah, it's definitely exhausting uh, trying to balance it all. And yeah, I might not need as much sleep as a younger person, but everyone needs sleep. And especially with yeah. bodybuilding, you need sleep to recover. So um, in fact, today is one of those days where it's not that busy of a day. I trained one client this morning and then I have the rest of the day free. So all I need to do is focus on me going to the gym and then anything else that I have to do. So I actually took a nap right before this. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, one of the rare days where I got to take a nap. <laughs> so, um, shit, what was I going to ask? Oh, fuck, I just had a brain fart. Um, damn it, there's something you just said I was going to ask about. My boyfriend? Yeah, your boyfriend. Mm -hmm. How do you manage that? <laughs> I, I've never really talked about dating. I mean, I've done like 60 of these now, uh -huh. but like a lot of people 
I don't know. I could argue for or against dating someone in the industry. Yeah. So I think dating someone in the industry, well, at least dating the specific person that I'm dating, um, is really beneficial because I understand, you know, when he's got to work and when he's tired and he understands the same thing for me. You know, if you're dating someone who doesn't know this industry, uh, this could definitely bring down a relationship. Oh, yeah. um, but we understand it, obviously, firsthand. Um, <laughs> But we're also very blessed that we both have very, very high sex drives. So whenever he has a scene, we're fucking like right after. And then, <laughs> oh, can I say that for YouTube? Yeah, I am. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, vice versa. Like after I do a scene, we still, we make time for ourselves. It doesn't take away from us at all. Um, there's times when we'll go two rounds in a day with still having scenes to film. So yeah. Um, Granted, you know, this this is not something that's probably sustainable in the long run, but we both don't plan on doing this for years and years and years and years. So, uh, but for the time being, yeah, it doesn't doesn't affect us. Okay. So are there any negatives to dating someone in the industry? Um, Can't always be positive. Um, I mean, it's just the this thing like, you know, sometimes... I have to, you know, set aside, okay, this is my time frame to film. Maybe he's filming at a separate time. Okay, then we've got this and then I've got my clients. And so maybe sometimes it can add up on that. But it's the same thing as if we were working, you know, a regular nine to five job, um, except we have a lot more free time than someone who works a nine to five job. So I wouldn't say that it really has anything negative. We both know that it's work. We both know, you know, that when we're in work mode, hey, we're filming, we're getting our content. There's nothing beyond that. You know, like uh, he and I, we, unless we're filming, like it's just me and him, or unless we go to like a circuit party um, or like an afters, aside from that, like it's just me and him. So we don't hold any animosity or any ill feelings towards each other. Like if he has five collabs lined up in a week, awesome. You get those five collabs. I'll be getting it right after. So (laughs) it doesn't bother me at all. How'd you guys meet? We met through this um, three years ago when I was in Miami. I like I had just started and he had just started and I had messaged him on Twitter. I was coming out to L.A. and we filmed and we just vibed so well. And I was like, man, I really like this guy. And the thing is, is I didn't know that the feelings were mutual um, because at first I thought they were. But then it felt like I was putting in a lot of effort and it wasn't feeling like it was reciprocated. And then once I moved here, we started seeing each other like a lot and I'm realizing, wait a second, he really does like me. So then we sat down, we had that talk and the rest is history. But I did bring up the past. I'm like, well, this whole time that I've known you, like I've wanted you. And he was just being realistic about it with me being in Miami and him being in LA. He didn't want to try to make a long distance thing work, especially with us both doing content. Um, But it ended up working in our favor because now here I am and we're, we're great. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So what do you enjoy more, LA or Miami? Oof. And why? Question. Uh, I think both have their pros and cons for sure. Um, I definitely don't like LA traffic. Um, <laughs> Miami is smaller capita than LA because LA is so grand. People hear LA and they think, oh, Hollywood, but LA engulfs so much area. So it's a lot. Um, and right now I live in downtown. He lives in Hollywood. A lot of my clients are in Hollywood too. A lot of collabs are in Hollywood or West Hollywood. So I'm like, Oh, why did I choose downtown? But, um, I will be moving to Hollywood in December. So that'll make things a lot easier. But I like that there are so many different areas in LA because there's so much to offer. And for content, it's a great hub. Miami, the time frame that I was there was beautiful because while the whole world shut down every single day, someone new was flying into Miami. So I was constantly getting DMs. Hey, Poppy, I'm coming to Miami. I'm coming to Miami. So I didn't even need to leave to make content. I could just stay in place and everyone was coming to me. But now if you go to Miami, there's only a few big content creators out there and people aren't going to Miami as frequently as they were before. So the time frame that I was there was golden. Uh, but now for content, LA is definitely much more beneficial. And then for the personal training scene, I say LA is more beneficial as well. Cause even though fitness is huge in Miami, LA, you've just got much of a wider area to service as well. Um, but I do really miss some of the culture out in Miami. 
And when I first moved here in February, it was really cold. And so I definitely missed uh, the heat out in Miami, <laughs> but I do not miss humidity. So, <laughs> I get that. so if you don't mind me asking, what do you charge for personal training? For personal training is 150 per session, um, but it's a minimum of two sessions a week. And I'm fortunate to have one of my clients does three to four sessions a week. Another one is five to six days a week. Um, and then it just depends on each person and their personal availability and what they can afford. Um, but once you start stacking up literally three or four clients at that rate, like that adds up quickly. Yeah. Okay. And you're at a point where you can pick and choose your clientele. Yeah, I actually, uh, lately I haven't been checking my email and I should just so that I could respond to the emails that I get. Um, but there's times when I've got a bunch of clients, like potential clients messaging me and I have to pick and choose because I'll wade through some like deciding questions to see if like it's worth my time and their time. Cause sometimes you, you realize very quickly, like, okay, I don't want to waste mine or their time. And if they're not serious about it, then I, I don't want to take them on as a client. So I want to take on a client that's in it for the long run that knows exactly what their goals are and is willing to put in the work. That's the most important part. Cause if you're paying me, to take you through a workout and help you with your diet and your goals, you have to show up and do the work and do the work behind the scenes as well. And if you're not going to do that, first off, you're wasting your own money, but you're wasting my time too. So it's, it's finding that balance. And I'm really fortunate to have the clients that I do have right now. Um, I could have a much bigger roster, but then I would have no time to myself and the ones that I have chosen to not take on, I've done that for a reason. So. Yeah. No, the reason why I ask is I used to be a personal trainer and I got, I think I burned myself out on it for the reasons you said. Yeah. You just start taking those clients where you're just like looking at your schedule. You're just like, mother. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. I know you've done that at least once. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's like, it's just the second it's not fun. Exactly. You know, and someone drains you. You're just like, mm -hmm. fuck. And that's the thing, like the whole point of me doing the personal training is not just because, oh, I'm, I'm fit and I, I know things it's because I actually have a passion for helping people meet their goals. But again, if they're not willing to do the work, I'm not passionate about just watching someone spin their wheels like we're trying to make progress here. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's really like what you're most passionate about. Yeah. It's like the influencing and fitness. Yeah, it was something that I always thought about back when I was managing the gyms, because I'd have people come in, I'd sit them down, I'd get them set up with the membership, and then I'd sell them on a personal training package. And they're like, so you're going to be my trainer. I'd be like, oh, no, 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 I'm just the sales manager. Or when I was the general manager, I'm just the general manager. We've got our trainers here, which, you know, we can get you set up with. And people are always like, why aren't you training? Why aren't you training? And it was always something that was in the back of my mind. And then once I came out here, I was like, because I started doing online coaching when I was in Miami. And then when I got out here, I'm like, let's actually take the step into the one on one personal training, because when I actually can see them and take them through the workouts, there's much more of that connection. And they're more likely to stay consistent with it than just talking to someone through the Internet. Um, also, it's much more income doing one on one than just online coaching. So, oh, yeah. yeah. So what are the pros and cons of content for you? Uh, pros would be the money. <laughs> I want to be completely honest. I was going to say, obviously. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's a business. I treat it as such. Um, I do enjoy a lot of the stuff that I do. Um, I, there's, you know, I do a lot of fetish content, which I'm, I really enjoy. So it's nice when I'm able to do that. And then some of the people that I film with are fantastic. I've made some great friendships. Obviously, it's how I met Porphy. Um, but as you know, a lot of the stuff that you do is performative and sometimes there is no chemistry and you have to fake it and make it look great. <laughs> so, you know, there are definitely highlights to doing this for sure. But then there are times when it's just like, man, or like you wake up some days and it's like, I don't want to film today because sometimes it doesn't feel like sex. It just feels like work. And I'm like, man, I want to do this today. <laughs> so, yeah, there's definitely... I'd say a good balance between the pros and cons. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, 
as long as you don't overwork yourself, which I have definitely done multiple times, as long as you don't overwork yourself, you can sustainably do this for a while. No, no, it's true. Like, and when you say fetish, because fetish, if I ask a thousand people, I'm going to get a thousand different answers. Like, true. <laughs> what does that mean to you exactly? Um, there are more things that I will say yes to than no. Uh, so on my website, um, on my tabs, um, there are two big fetishes that I'm really big on. And so those have their own separate category. And that would be water sports. I'm really big on that. And then the other one is fisting. So, um, yeah. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah. I have a lot of fun with those uh, videos. Cause and you can post those on OnlyFans? No, so that's why I have my website. Okay, I was just going to say... Uh... <laughs> no, I'm well aware of the terms of service. Um, both of those categories are not allowed on OnlyFans. So okay. that's what prompted me to originally make my website. And then once I made the website, it's like, well, not only can I post that content, I can design this how I want. I can categorize things. I can make it a lot cleaner so people can find exactly what they're looking for. Um, and then I can also do the fun things like doing the vlog and adding bonus content. So, um, yeah, I, I very much enjoy having that freedom, but yeah, that content is not allowed on OnlyFans. <laughs> okay. So the vlog, like, does someone have to subscribe to see that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah they, get, they have to be a paying member to see that it's released every Monday. Um, and then the vlog for the most part is almost YouTube friendly. It's just, there's some stuff like behind the scenes stuff where obviously that's not YouTube friendly because people have asked me like, why not get into YouTube? And I'm like, ah, the vlog goes on my website. Um, also YouTube is a hard bubble to crack. I mean, you're in this space. So, you know, um, there are so many YouTubers and I'm like, ah, like I'm afraid of failure. And I've thankfully like been able to succeed in like a lot of the things that I've done. And I just like, the thought of making a YouTube and having it flop is not something that I want to see happen. <laughs> yeah. And what a lot of people don't realize too about YouTube is just because a channel is monetized doesn't mean every video is monetized because a video can be green, yellow, or red. So green is just like, you know, like, uh, you know, motivational or inspirational video, something like that. Yellow means severely limited, like, ads. So this video would be yellow or red. Yeah. Like, if you mentioned sex or porn or fetish or kink or anything, it goes immediately to the yellow or red, and you don't make anything off of it. Yeah. It's just, yeah. Yeah, it's one of those spaces like that. Um, kind of like Instagram, like I don't really, yeah. promote. a lot of people that do content, you go to their Instagram, it's very obvious they do content. When you go to my Instagram, you have an idea. Um, if you hit my link tree, then obviously you'll see the links there. Uh, but I don't really promote like new scene with blah, 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 blah. It's more so just fitness related stuff, um, sneaker stuff, um, outfits, whatever, just kind of me as a person, um, rather than the content side. You go to my Twitter, obviously that all it is is content. <laughs> but yeah, it's, there's um, it's the same thing with that because Instagram is so picky with what you can put. <laughs> and I I'm love like, watching you try to pick the word to use. <laughs> yeah, so ah, it is what it is. No, and that was actually one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you. And I feel like that's part of the reason for your success is like that you, I don't want to say this, like you really market yourself like as a person. Yeah. Because so many people are just like, oh, look at my giant dick. And right. that's it. It's like, okay, great. You know, whereas like, your Instagram, especially like, it's like, Oh, wow. You know, they, I guess fall in love with you. And then that act, other things kind of like a bonus or on top yeah. of it. You yeah. know what I mean? I think, yeah, I think that goes back to um, like what we were talking about with the relatability, right? 
Um, if you're just seeing, like you said, someone that just is known for having a big dick. Okay, cool. What's the personality behind that? Who's the person? Uh, what makes you special from the next guy who has a big dick? Because there's a lot of people that have big dicks, right? <laughs> so it's like when people can see something to relate to, like, wow, this is kind of just like a regular guy, just like me. Like, yeah, I might be doing some things that um, other people might not have the opportunity to do. Um, when I might be traveling to places that, you know, people, you know, only think about going to, but they realize like, he's just a regular guy. You know, he goes to the gym, just like a regular guy. Like he's not like this crazy celebrity that people seem to put you on a pedestal of like, I'm just another guy, you know? Um, so I think when they're able to see that, that helps, I don't know, get across to them more. Um, because some people get so cocky, I guess is the right word or full of themselves. And it's like, I, I could care less, you know, what my Twitter following is. Um, I'm just another guy, you know, if Twitter went down today, um, who am I, you know, like a, that number that you're seeing there, that doesn't mean anything, you know? <laughs> so I think when people realize that and they see that it makes them appreciate that more and then they'll stick around and be a loyal fan. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that was one thing I wanted to ask you about is where in your life, what do you attribute that humility to? Because I know that you've met plenty of content creators because I know I've met plenty of them where like they have X amount of followers and they think like I'm God's gift to mankind yes. and just. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's it's so unattractive to me when I get that vibe from someone or when they just talk about that. And I'm like, okay, so <laughs> what if your Twitter got deactivated today? Like, who are you? You're nobody, right? Um, so like, I, I never focus on that. Like, that's, I could care less. I think what to attribute that to, I guess, just being on the other side of things, you know, back before all of this happened, you know, just being a regular guy with an Instagram, just posting fitness related stuff. Uh, back when I was go go dancing, you know, posting go go stuff. And, you know, there'd be times when we'd have like a guest dancer that was getting paid, obviously much more. And they've got a big following and they just had this ego. And I'm like, Oh, that's so unattractive. I never want to be that. <laughs> So they're basically reverse role models. Yeah, yeah. You're like, I'm not doing that. Yeah, I think that's a great way to put it. But I think it probably just stems from that, you know, being on the exact flip side of this and just being someone um, on the outside of the looking glass. So, yeah. That's very, very rare, though, because, like, it's – like, you know how they say money and power corrupt? Uh -huh. Like, I've never believed that. I believe money and power just reveal the person who is already there to begin with. Ooh, that's good. I like that. That's a good quote. You know, like, they were always that piece of shit. They just didn't have the ability to be that piece of shit. Yeah, yeah. Now they have that platform to reveal it. And it's exactly. Amplified. But, like, no, like, what you're saying, though, like, not forgetting where you came from i feel like that's super rare today yeah. no I, I i agree and it's unfortunate it is what it is uh but i do think back you know a lot like very frequently like i'll think back to times when you know my friends would want to go out and i'd be like okay i, I gotta use my credit card because i don't have the money in my account or when i would see something uh like a pair of shoes that i really wanted and i'd be like i I can't afford to, you know, have that. And I think back to those times a lot. And I think continuously remembering that and thinking back to that helps to keep you grounded. Um, because yeah, otherwise I, I don't think, like you said, money and power or money, yeah, money and power corrupts. Um, but if you already, you know, are kind of a person like that, it will just amplify that. And it is easy to sometimes forget. So you have to constantly like bring yourself back down a notch. Um, I think that's the best thing that someone could do. You know, always remember your beginnings and where you started. Um, someone that I really look up to is the rock, uh, Dwayne Johnson. And he constantly brings up, you know, like he came here with $7. 
Um, that's why he named his film production company Seven Bucks Production. Like hearing people like that who are able to talk about those times and, and what made them what they are, that's so refreshing because you know, there's so many people who aren't like that. And it is what it is. Yeah, no, I, I love stories like that. Mm-hmm. Just someone who's able to build themselves up from absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, Arnold, Schwar- Sch- Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, yeah. another thing like just crazy. Yeah. And yeah. have you seen the uh, Arnold documentary on Netflix? I to say, yeah, I just watched that. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like one of the biggest takeaways that I could relate to you was like, remember when he did his first movie and then there was like a five or six year period, but he wasn't having to take those shitty roles because he had enough money. Right. Remember? So he could cherry pick and wait out until he got the roles he wanted. Right. I feel like that is easily something you could use all this for, you know, just to create that, that like base so that you're never in that position that you were like, Oh, I have to pay my mortgage or I have to pay this. So fuck, I got to take this thing and I really don't want to do or this client or, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. No, I, that's something that's on my mind too. I think about, uh, more often than maybe I should, I always think about like, um, I never want to be broke again. Like, uh, I, I, I always think of like the worst possible scenario. So I'm like, okay, what if all of this ended today? Like, am I going to be able to sustain myself? So I have um, what I call like my rainy day fund. So my money that I have in the bank, I've got some money in a CD, but then like my money in the bank, whatever level I set for like my rainy day fund, that means everything above that, that's what I look at is what I have in the bank. Everything below that, I look at that as a zero balance. So that way I never dip into that. So in the event that something tragic did happen, where all of a sudden I'm not making money. Okay. That's where the rainy day fund kicks in, but I, I never want to get near that amount. So I just look above that amount. That's how much money I have in the bank. If that makes sense. No, it, it really does. And I relate to that so much because there's been times in my life where I've been so poor, where I couldn't afford a fucking soda out of a vending machine. Like that was just not even possible. Yeah. You know, I was, living on party pizzas because you could buy them for 99 cents you know like no i yeah it's i think the worst the worst memory that i have was um i needed gas in my car like i was literally on empty i had been on empty for a minute and i'm like i'm gonna run out of gas so i pulled into the gas station and i'm checking under my seats for like quarters dimes whatever and i got like a dollar and some change worth of gas um, just so that I could get home and like figure out what I'm going to do next to be able to fill up my tank. (laughs) So I never want to be in that position again. (laughs) Yeah, no, when you're in that position, it really does change you. Oh yeah. Like it just, yeah. Yeah. So that's like, and even sometimes now when I feel overworked, I'm like, you got this. Cause I think back to like when I was in the Bay area, I was managing, I was bartending and I was go-go dancing just so that I could hustle and make it by. And I'm like, okay, well, you're not nearly as overworked as you've been in the past. So you could do this. <laughs> yeah. This is like downhill. Yeah. To- yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. And you said you grew up like a uh, very low income. Like yeah. what was your childhood like? Uh, I mean, you you seem to be very grounded, grounded, rational, logical, like something had to make you this way. (laughs) Yeah, I was raised by a single mom. Uh, My dad left uh, basically when she told him that she was pregnant because they weren't dating. He just, you know, got her pregnant. And so my mom raised me and my two brothers from two other dads who also were deadbeats. So seeing my mom struggle to financially support the three of us on one income um i i have so much respect for her and i constantly think back to that and i'm like how did she do it like 
I'm over here, like I rewind back to when I was in the Bay Area, and I'm like, I'm working three jobs and struggling just to keep myself afloat. How did she do it and provide for us? But she did. And so having that and, you know, being on the free lunch program and seeing kids who had more than I had, you know, it definitely, it humbles you. But the one thing that I could always say that I had was the love from my mom. And, you know, some people don't grow up in a loving household. And I would take that any day over the money because money can be made. But that love, that's, that's forever. So uh, I think just that, having that childhood that I did have shaped me into the person that I am today, for sure. Yeah. No, that, I don't know. It's crazy when you go through, like, do you ever, like, think back on certain situations in your life, like when you were in the Bay Area, and you think, like, how the fuck did I make it through that? Like, you just genuinely have no idea, like, how you made it work. You're like, if I had to do that all over again, I'd be screwed. No, I, I do think back to that. Um, or I'll think back to certain situations. Like, before I was in the Bay Area, I was in Sacramento. Um, and when I was in Sacramento, because that's where I went to college, um, you know, I had some debts that I had from college. And I was working as a manager full time. But I didn't have a second job. And then I get to the Bay Area and I'm working three jobs. And I'm like, how the hell did I make it in Sacramento? And then how did I make it in the Bay Area? Maybe because Sacramento is cheaper than the Bay. I don't know. But I think back to those times and I'm like, oh, man, I can't even fathom. Like, I don't know how I did it, especially with, you know, lifting and, and buying supplements and buying my food. It's like, I don't know. There, there's times when I'm like, I don't know how I did it. I did it. <laughs> but I don't know how I did it. I mean, you're living proof that everything you went through is possible, you know? No, and that's something that I always tell people, like, don't doubt yourself. Don't ever doubt yourself because the mind is such a strong thing. And if you tell yourself that you can't do something, you've already failed. So, and that that's not just for life that goes in with lifting, that goes in with anything. You can apply that to anything. And so, yeah, the mind's super powerful. And so I always tell myself like you've got this you could do this uh, reassure myself and um especially like with lifting like if i'm going for a pr i tell myself like either i tell myself you've already done this lift or i motivate myself and say like if you don't deadlift this weight your whole family dies something like that <laughs> <laughs> you know i can relate to that and i guarantee a lot of people watching this can relate to that because i've said similar things so yeah. many oh my god but yeah no um yeah at the end of the day your mind is super powerful and anything that you set your mind to you can achieve as long as you have a game plan and that just all goes into how determined you are you know uh, i don't know did you follow rich piana right yeah so he was his big thing was five percent that's why he created five percent nutrition where he said, there's really only 5% of the world who's willing to do whatever it takes to meet your goals. And I firmly agree with that statement, or maybe it's even less than 5%, because so many people talk about what they want and how life is so unfair. And guess what? Life is unfair. But if someone can come from nothing and be successful because they work their ass off and they set their mind to something, then you could do it too. It's just so many people whine and they don't do anything about it. So I'm a firm believer in like, Anyone can do anything. It's just actually taking those actions and putting the work in. Oh, yeah. No, it's so true, though. And, like, so many people, it's like, I, I know you, if you follow Rich, you probably remember when he talks about this. But, like, you know, when he's like, oh, yeah, uh, they're, they're up on the Olympia stage because they're on steroids. Or they're on more steroids than me because it makes you feel better. Exactly. Because now you don't have to accept responsibility that you're not doing whatever it takes. Yep. Yep. No, I, I God, I've watched hours and hours upon <laughs> of his content. And I loved it because he was so real. And he was also one of those people that had one of those massive fan bases just because by showing that realness and also showing like him going to get his Ben and Jerry's at 7-Eleven, like it, it, it's relatable. So when you are relatable and you're down to earth with people, I think that helps you to be successful in, in gaining a following and maintaining that because you're not putting yourself on this pedestal above other people. So yeah. uh, he's another perfect example of that. No, I, I've 
I actually have a giant 5% tattoo right here on my chest. Oh, that's funny. I've got one right here. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Wow. Okay, you and I have a lot in common. Have you read or watched The Secret? I have, actually. I've seen the movie. Yeah. You yeah, and I are so similar. It's <laughs> No, I, I firmly believe in the law of attraction. Um, and that's, that's all goes into, like I said, like if you tell yourself you haven't, you can't do something, then you're not going to do it. It's, it's that simple. And yeah, a law of attraction, what you put out into the universe will come back to you. Oh yeah. No. And it's like, and I feel like, and I, I want to take this opportunity to talk about this because I'll get tons of messages and I'm sure you get them too, where it's like, Oh, you know, why no one wants to be my friend or no one wants to date me or I can't find a boyfriend or this or that. And it's like the one thing that I feel like so many people seriously underestimate mm -hmm. is just having a positive mindset, being optimistic, being fun, being energetic. Like nobody fucking wants to be around Debbie Downer. Woe is me. Like, oh, my life sucks. And this happened and that. Like, nobody wants to be around that shit. Well, nobody. Exactly. Yeah, and, you know, I will say uh, for the general, like, uh, percentage of the time, I'm a very positive guy, um, very uplifting. But there are times when I will do that, too, and I have to kick myself out of that because I'm like, what the hell? Like, this this isn't going to get you anywhere. And there's times when my boyfriend has done the same thing. Like, it's like, reality check, dude. Like, stop being so down on yourself because, like, there's times when I'm like, I don't want to go to the pool party. I feel fat. I look fat. Blah, blah, blah. He's <laughs> like, you are not fat by any means. You're getting in your head. You need to knock this out because you're just, you know, bringing everyone down. I'm like, okay, 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 okay. Because, um, yeah, when, when you're constantly all mopey, blah, 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 blah. Okay, well, now you're just going to be in this infinite loop because you acting like that is now not going to make anyone want to be around you, which is going to make you continue to act like that, <laughs> you know? So yeah, it's being able to put a smile on, be confident. Um, even if you're not confident about a certain situation, just exuding confidence, um, it does a wonder, you know, for, for your mentality and, and how situations are handled for sure. Oh yeah. No. And it's like, and I'm glad you said that though, because we all have down days because oh, sure. very much like you said, there'll be days when I'll need to post something and I'll like go look in the mirror and I'm like, fuck, <laughs> like my abs don't look very good today. Fuck this. Yeah. 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 Or, you know, like, yeah, you, but like, how do you walk yourself back from that ledge? Um, sometimes I just need a minute, like me as a person, like, Sometimes if I'm like overwhelmed and usually if I'm overwhelmed, I'm the one overwhelming myself. Uh, so I just take a minute, refocus, regroup, breathe in, breathe out. Okay. Let's, let's switch. Let's flip the switch here because this, this is not going to get me anywhere. Um, either that, or if I'm feeling like down about like my body or whatever, I think back to when I was go-go dancing because I was very thick at that time frame. Um, I just look back at photos and I'm like, oh my God, I was so fat, but thick, thick is the right word to use. Right. So, uh, I'll look at that and I'm like, if I had the confidence to get up there in a G string looking like that back then, then I should have no problem now, you know? Um, and also I just know that your, your brain will play tricks on you. There's times when there's days literally where I'm like, I feel like yesterday I looked amazing and today I look like shit. Uh, but then I'll take photos and be like, okay, wait, I, that's me. Like, this isn't what I was looking at in the mirror, you know, cause we see something completely yeah. different. So there's times when I just have to like tell myself, like, it's all in your head, like get, get out of your head, you know, get back into that positive mindset, uh, smile, just enjoy everything. Um, and yeah, it, flipping that switch, it does wonders. So I think a lot of other people i could see where people struggle with you know making that switch but once you just let that go like it, it's like a whole weight is lifted up off your shoulders yeah no and it's like another thing too is like everyone's familiar with like downward spiral right mm -hmm. like your boyfriend or girlfriend leaves you so then you go to the bar then you start drinking but what's interesting is almost no one's aware of the upward spiral because the opposite is also true. Exactly. You know, you start going to the gym, then you 
start feeling better about yourself and you start getting more confidence and then it just you know it yeah that's i think it just goes to like what kind of a person you are like you can look at the cards that are dealt to you uh for example like when i was in the bay area uh everything was like pulled out from underneath me do i stay here in the bay area and cry about it do i move back home with my mom and cry about it um or do i pick myself up and think okay we've got to do something here let's game plan and let's completely do something different let's move to miami let's start up this content and, and get back into hustle mode and set yourself up for success. Like there was multiple options of what I could have done and I chose the best possible option. So I think it's just how you handle situations, you know, uh, everyone in life, even if you're born with a silver spoon in your mouth, everyone at some point has dealt with a shitty situation. How do you handle yourself and pick up from that? That's going to determine, you know, how successful you are. So, no, yeah. no. And uh, like, Going back to that, like, uh, fork in the road, if you will, that you were at, someone told me something once, I'm sure it's got to be based on a famous quote or something, but it really just, like, stuck with me and kind of rattled around my brain. But it was, you are always one decision away from a completely different life. Oh, my gosh. I think about that all the time, the butterfly effect, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. imagine had you gone back to be with your mom. Like, oh, how fucking different your entire life would be right now yeah no i love my mom but i can't imagine doing that moving back in at home uh life would be drastically different i and i don't know what it would look like i think about one of the things i think about a lot is when i was in college if i had stayed on the men's row team because i was a buck 80 i was doing cardio constantly I was actually really good at rowing coach wanted me to keep working with him to work to getting into the olympics had I gone that route, who knows what would have happened. Um, but instead, you know, we're wearing our, our tank tops for uh, the regattas, which is the race days. And I'm looking at my arms and I'm like, these arms are toothpicks. I want to change this. And so I left the men's row team to start lifting because if I was to lift while doing three hours of cardio a day, six days a week, I'd have to be eating like at least 6,000 calories to even grow a little bit because you're burning so much off. So I was like, it's going to be one or the other. And I chose to leave for lifting. And that, just that small decision has drastically changed my life. Because once I started lifting, I started looking into bodybuilding programs. The first program I ever did was Jay Cutler's Living Large. And then I'm watching Rich Piana and all these different people. And just organizing my workouts or organizing my meals and having that discipline has carried over into so much other things in my life. Uh, cause sometimes people will be like, how do you have the discipline to do X, Y, and Z? And I'm like, honestly, it all roots from when I started lifting and wanting to get bigger. So that little decision to stop rowing, to do this, I mean, that I don't know where my life would be. So I think about that a lot. Like this one small little decision could drastically change everything. Oh, yeah. And I feel like the more, like when you truly appreciate that, it makes you more methodical and calculated in every decision that you make. Like, you don't just see, like, right here, what's this going to give me in the next five minutes? You start thinking a lot more long term and running things through to, like, the obvious logical conclusion. And, mm -hmm. you know, it just. Yeah, I do that. Uh, I had done a strength test uh, back when I was a manager for 24 Hour Fitness. And so it, it does this whole series of testing to figure out like what your five strengths are. And my number one was futuristic, which is a pro and a con because futuristic meaning you think into the future and you plan ahead. Um, and that's definitely great, but at the same time, it can cause you to not really live in the moment and appreciate what you have in the moment. So, um, oh. sometimes I have to slow myself down cause I'll be thinking like, okay, if I do this, then this will happen. The, 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 you know, <laughs> sometimes I'm like, okay, just kind of live for the moment. Um, but yeah, being methodical in some of the decisions that you make is very, very smart um, because that's going to determine a lot. Like me moving to L.A., um, I thought long and hard about it. I'm like, is this do I want to do L.A.? Do I want to go back to California? And now I'm like, wow, this was the best decision I could have made. I'm so glad that I came here. Um, but yeah, it's, I think it's smart to 
think long and hard about like some of the decisions that you're going to make. But there are times when something like out on a whim, like when I came out to Miami, that was kind of like, I'm at my last straw. What do I do? I'm leaving yeah. SF. I could have gone anywhere. I could have moved to LA at that point. I could have moved to Texas. I could have moved, I could have moved anywhere. Right. But I chose Miami and it was the best decision I could have made. So, um, but I do think about that a lot. One small decision, um, will drastically change your life. Oh yeah. No, it's, it's crazy. And it's just like, God, no, <laughs> it's funny. Cause I guarantee if like, I looked up like, you and I's YouTube videos that we watch over the last 10 years, it would be like 80% match. Yeah. No, it's, it's funny. Sometimes like I'll meet people where I'm like, when I remember when I was in Miami, um, one of my closest friends out there, he's straight. Um, but so many similarities and the same thing we'd be talking about rich Piana and like all these different things. And I'm like, dude, you're literally just like me, except you're straight. <laughs> no, and it's like one thing, though, like I'm curious about because I've always I, I'm curious what your thoughts are on this. But for me personally, I've always attributed like 90 percent of my success to bodybuilding or lessons that bodybuilding has taught me. I feel like it's taught me most of the most important lessons in life. Yeah, no, it, I think that is kind of what I was getting at earlier when I said, like, just me getting into lifting and, and the discipline that it takes for the meals and, and the training and all of that, that's factored over into everything, basically. Um, so, yeah, I think a big percentage of why I am who I am now, um, not only from how I grew up, but from taking that that decision to move forward with lifting and, and getting involved with bodybuilding and having a coach and all of that, like that has definitely bled into everything else. Um, as me as a person for sure. Yeah. No, it teaches you hard work, mm -hmm. discipline, like the fact that good things don't just happen overnight that, you know, I don't know. And like one of my favorite quotes of all time I've got on the side of my head, I know you've got to have heard it because I'm pretty sure our Instagram feeds are similar. But it's from Mike Tyson and it's discipline is doing what you hate to do, but doing it like you love it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Nope. There's a lot of days when, I mean, that's, that's when I was talking about, like, there's days I don't want to film. But it's the same thing. There's days when I wake up and I'm like, I do not feel like going to the gym today. And the funny thing is, is I'm like, you're going to do it anyway. You're going to love it. And sometimes those are the best workouts for me yeah, personally, yeah, yeah. for me personally, there's days when I'm like, this is, I do not want to go to the gym today. Then I snap out of it and I start drinking my pre-workout. Cause once I drink that, there's no going back. I'm not going to drink my pre-workout and just sit on the couch. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, this, this is, once I do this, I have to go. And then I'll get in the gym and sometimes those are the best workouts. And I'm like, man, I'm okay. I'm so glad you get that little adrenaline rush. The little endorphins going off and i'm like okay yeah no this is this is why i do it <laughs> oh yeah and i'm guessing too that some of your best collabs have probably also happened because you'll like wake up in the morning you're like fuck i really don't want to shoot today like yeah that's also happened as well um i've had days where i'm like uh whatever we're just gonna do this it's gonna be great like i'm telling myself all these things and then it goes fantastic and i'm like oh my god i'm so happy <laughs> Um, one of the most recent scenes that I did, uh, with Raheem, uh, it was a threesome and I was, it's not that I didn't want to film that day. It's just that I was so nervous about how that scene would be perceived, um, because of the dick size difference. Right. Um, but that scene blew up and everyone's been asking for it. Like it's, it's definitely one of the most successful scenes that I've done. And I'm like, man, I was so in my head about it. And it ended up being this gorgeous scene. Uh, very, very happy with it. But yeah, I was super in my head going into that one too. So um, it's, it's funny how sometimes we'll overthink things. Or like you said, like sometimes you're like, oh my God, I don't want to take photos today. Is like, I'm supposed to make content in this, whatever you want to take a photo in if, if a brand has sent you something. Uh, but then sometimes you get the photos and you're like, whoa, wait, that's me? That's how I look right now? <laughs> Yeah, so, no, yeah a, lot of, a lot of times it's just all right here. So 
one of the last questions that I have is like, and I'm sure tons of your fan base struggle with the same thing, but what do you do when you're getting like, when you get in your head, like, Oh, I'm not going to be able to do this or I'm going to where, you know, you just mind's going crazy, convincing you you can do it or it's going to look like shit or you're going to fail. Like what methods do you use to overcome that? Uh, there's a few. I mean, sometimes, like I said, I just have to like calm myself down, take a few breaths and be like, you're stressing yourself out. Like you're the one causing this internal battle that's going on. There's not any outside factors. It's you calm down. You got this. Or I just think of like prior situations where I might've felt the same way and then it was a beautiful thing. Um, or where I thought, you know, something might not be so successful in the past and then it was super successful. Um, kind of like when I started making content, it was just supposed to be something to tie me over until the next thing and it ended up being everything. So I'm like, I'm always telling myself, like, don't doubt yourself, you got this. Um, with the most simplest things, like when I just did this mile time this weekend, going into it, I'm like, Oh my God, this is going to suck. Like, I don't know if I could beat my last mile time. And I'm like, no, stop. It's, it's less than seven minutes. And that's such a fraction of your day. I'm like, you got this, like, just go out there, kill it. And then I, I told myself, you know, a similar situation. Like when I said, like when I deadlift, you know, sometimes what I tell myself um, for the run, I was like, if you don't get the mile time that you're going for, your dog's going to run away. And, and that's my baby angel. So I'm like, I'm doing it for my dog. <laughs> no, I love that. I love that. So, oh, and now that you just mentioned, yeah, that's what I have tattooed on my knuckles. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah. I figured you would catch that. Yeah. So you were like, what does that mean? I'm just like, oh, God, okay, never mind. <laughs> Long story. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, um, I think... And that's, there's a quote, I forget exactly how the quote goes, but so many people are searching for motivation and inspiration, which is great, but it has to come from within. You have to be able to give yourself a pep talk and motivate and inspire yourself. Um, and I think that's why a lot of people fail too, because they're like, oh, I'm just not motivated to go to the gym. You need to motivate yourself. You, if, if you're not happy with how you look in the mirror, right? then looking in the mirror should motivate you to go to the gym or you could apply that to anything in life. Like if you're not happy with the money that you're making, that should motivate you to make a game plan, you know? Um, so I think you need to be able to motivate and inspire yourself. It's great to look for, you know, those outlets. Like we talked about, like I look up to the rock. I loved which Piana followed a lot of his stuff, but at the end of the day, those guys aren't going to make me do anything. I'm the person that needs to step up and get shit done. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So for anyone who's watching this, who doesn't already follow you, where can they find all your content, your fan sites, your websites, anything and everything you want to plug? Yeah. Um, on Instagram, it's just fitness poppy with an underscore at the end. Uh, my website is fitnesspoppy.com. Um, my OnlyFans is onlyfans.com slash fitness poppy with an underscore as well. And then Twitter is PR muscle poppy. I actually hate that name. Um, but when I first started Twitter, it was at fitness poppy. And then my account got suspended, um, because wow. my default picture was me in underwear. Uh, it wasn't any nudity, wasn't even a jock strap. It was just underwear and they suspended me without a warning. So. And when you get suspended, I had heard that if you try to make another account, they will suspend that one too. So I created a new email and I wanted a name that was completely different. So PR for Puerto Rican and then Muscle Poppy. But I hate that at. <laughs> What's funny is I actually got in trouble with Twitter for the same thing, except for it was my banner image. Ah, uh, yep. I get you for that. So, yeah, anytime I see someone with a risky photo, either their banner or their um, default picture, I'm like, ah, ah, you should change that. Like, there's a reason that even though I make content, my default picture is just me with a stringer on. And then my background, my banner is just roses. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to make anything sexual because I don't want to risk that happening again. But yeah, those are, those are how you could find me. Okay. And do you have a link for you or anything? Um, on my Instagram, uh, in my bio, there's a link tree, which has the, okay. 
direct link to my uh, website, my OnlyFans, uh, me and my boyfriend's TikTok as well. Um, but yeah. Okay. Um, for those of you watching or listening, I will put Fitness Poppy's link tree down below because much like other sites, I can't post links in your other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I can't post that. Yeah. And you got to love how you learn these things by violating them. And then, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, because I got a strike on this channel for that. Yeah. Trial and error. <laughs> oh, my God. But and oh, last question. How like because I have tons and tons of content creators on here for someone who's not familiar with your content how and you know they're interested in sub subscribing how would you describe it or summarize it uh on my only fans um if you're subscribing you're going to see a little bit of a mix of everything i typically film with people that are smaller than me uh, but that's pretty easy dude everyone's smaller than you <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so yeah that's it, it's kind of easy for that to happen but typically like twinks but i have filmed with um daddies i film with muscle guys beefier guys um it's it's a big mix of everything on there and then on my website that's where obviously there's much more to see there um as far as like the fetish content goes um but i try to capture a great scene as far as like just the sex behind it like a real scene i don't really like sit down and go okay we need to do x y and z before we start filming we just let the magic unfold but there are definitely some things that i'll do more performative like lifting guys up um things like that so yeah there's a wide mix of of everything um on my channel okay awesome and one last question you mentioned it earlier and I had a brain fart and totally forgot to ask, but like you said, it's sex on camera is very performative and yeah. So, all right, you in your private life, no cameras filming or, you know, nothing. You can only have sex in two positions for the rest of your life. What yeah. positions and why? Only two. Oh, okay. Only uh two. Well, missionary for sure. That's my favorite. And, um, you know, it's funny. I haven't got a lot of hate for it, but in almost every scene, not every scene, but in almost every scene, that's how I finish is in missionary. Um, so that's a must. Um, I like being able to look someone in the eyes, um, kiss them, have complete control over because I'm the one holding them in place. So I really like that position. Uh, but then the other would be a toss up between having someone ride me um, and me hitting it doggy. Cause I, I love both of those, but I guess if I had to choose two, it would be doggy and missionary. Oh, I, like, I like being able to grab and see. You. <laughs> I would choose riding and missionary. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you said that though, because like one thing that drives me crazy is there's this whole like, notion that like missionary is boring or like oh I you're know. so boring i bet you have sex in the missionary fuck yeah i do it's the best fucking position dude like i don't know who ever started that because i've definitely heard that too um especially like just in tv shows like people oh she probably has sex in missionary and i'm like uh yeah that's that's like, <laughs> that's one <laughs> absolutely yeah. yeah no so Seriously, though, uh, don't go anywhere. I cannot thank you enough for doing this. I've had a blast. And frankly, it's like talking to my Puerto Rican clones. So. <laughs> no, likewise. I've really enjoyed this. This has been great. So thank you for having me. Hey, guys, just want to say thank you for watching this video. And if you did really enjoy it, I just wanted to mention there are two ways that you can help to support this channel. On the right side, there are three little dots. If you click those, there is a super thanks button. And on the left hand side, there is a join button where you can join this channel. There are three different tiers of memberships. The top tier does actually allow one-on-one -on -one messaging with me via Discord. And I personally answer that it is not a service. That's just, you know, both of those are ways that you can help support me as a content creator in this channel. I mention this because YouTube is by far the thing that I enjoy doing the most. It's the thing I'm most passionate about. And unfortunately, a lot of the sexual videos 
the porn star confessions, the Dom sub, all that stuff. It is not monetized due to the nature of the videos. But either way, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I hope you guys all have an absolutely amazing week. I love you all.